Hello, New York Rangers fans. It's a pleasure to see you again around these parts. Welcome to the 20th 2020 NHL Draft Recap here at Scouching. And today we're looking at the New York Rangers draft crop. And we're just going to dive right into it because we all know what happened first overall. They didn't overthink things and first off the board goes Alexi Lafreniere. I don't really know what needs to be said about him that hasn't been said already. He is going to be as good a hockey player as he wants to be. He's got tremendous skill. He's got tremendous physical abilities when he applies himself. He's got tremendous creativity in the offensive zone, tremendous goal scoring instincts. And I think there's a ton of potential for him to be an elite level offensive player in the NHL. And I think the challenge of the NHL will be a challenge that he rises to meet. I really think he's going to have a great career with the Rangers, and I think he fits in exactly with what they're looking for in a player. At 19th overall, though, they traded up and drafted Braden Schneider. Now, I know I have my concerns about Braden Schneider, and I think he's going to be at least an NHL defenseman one day. But I have a lot of question marks about this pick, especially when you consider who was on the board. Someone like Hendricks Lapierre or Connor Zari or Brendan Brisson would have all been names that I would have heard come up and probably would have pushed for in this slot. The idea of taking a big swing on Hendricks Lapierre to work with potentially Alexi Lafreniere for the next decade would have been outstandingly ridiculous to me. But Braden Schneider is a safer pick. He's a safer player, he's calm, he's fluid, he is good defensively, but there are some serious question marks I have with regards to his offensive game and his overall consistency with his awareness with and without the puck in the defensive end. I think he's a good player, but certainly not a guy that I would have looked at at 19th overall, especially when you don't have another pick until 60th overall in the draft. And speaking of 60th overall, they traded a player they drafted top 10 in the draft in 2018, for the 60th overall pick, which they used on Will Cully. Now, I've seen Will Cully play a lot, and I think he is a big reason why Jean-Luc Foudy did not have the season that many people expected. I just think those two players are not meant to work well together, and I think it was blatantly obvious. Will Cully is an aggressive, powerful, physical player with a decent set of hands and a decent shot on him. He's not a bad hockey player, but at 60th overall, I would not have been thinking about him, especially if the previous name off the board for me was Braden Schneider. I would have aimed for a little bit more offensive firepower here because I think that's something the Rangers could use more of in their forward prospects. So maybe Will Cooley is a bottom six energy guy that goes out there and crashes and bangs his opponent into submission, but I felt that trading a top 10 prospect to trade into the draft and draft Will Cooley is just very strange asset management to me, and I just felt they swung really weakly in a slot where they really could have swung for the fences with that pick, just like they tried to with Leas Anderson. At 92nd overall, they surprised me with drafting Oliver Tarnstrom. Now, I've tracked a few games of Oliver Tarnstrom, and I think he actually has a case to be a potential NHL player. He's a really good defense-first center with a solid set of feet under him, He's not the fastest skater, but his size has a lot of potential for growth. He's a good puck handler. He knows how to find teammates around the ice. He pushes into the offensive zone with control pretty well, and his defensive results were where he really will make his money. I think it's a reasonable swing to take at 92. Maybe a bit higher than I would have taken him, but not that much higher. I really am a fan of Oliver Tarnstrom, and if around that range someone brought his name up as an option, it's a bit of a reach, but I really like the reach the Rangers made in that slot. I think Tarnstrom is a curious case for the next few years. At 103, again with the goalies, they drafted Dylan Garand, and I've heard from multiple people that Garand is one of the goalies worth swinging on. So, we'll have to see what happens. He's a goalie, people seem to like him, I'm not an expert, but we'll see what happens. If you get your goalie with the 103rd overall pick, sure, great, you got your goalie. But this is also a team that has two young goaltenders in the pipes now for the next X amount of years, and they won't have to worry about the goaltending position if they continue to play their cards right. So maybe Garand is a guy that comes in in a few years, but even if he doesn't work out, you still have two really solid NHL goalies, and that's not a bad problem to have. Then the Rangers just turned their brains off and took players that were falling way too far in the draft. At 127th, they took Evan Veerling. Real solid meat and potatoes player, I don't think there's quite enough there to be a legitimate NHL top end player, but he's a very reliable all around player that just pushes good results. Brett Berard at 134 is another player that I absolutely loved this season. He won my Mr. Analytics award of all of the players that I tracked this year. He drives offensive transitions extremely well, he's resilient on his feet for a small player, and I think he's going to do really well in Providence College's system. Some really good players have come out of there recently. So I'm curious to see what happens with him over the next few years. And at 134, with him and Ty Tulio and Sean Farrell all going in this range, 
you could look at some really interesting steals down the road for that slot range. Then at 165, the New York Rangers continued with their tradition of drafting at least one gigantic boy to play down the middle for their lineup one day with Matthew Rempe. I mean, I've seen a bit of Rempe this year because he did have good offensive catalyst metrics from what I tracked, but I just see a really, really big player that's hard to counter at the WHL level with a decent set of hands for someone that big. But beyond that, I didn't see a whole lot that I really thought was worth taking in the draft. He's huge, so you bet on that, and maybe you end up with something between him and Adam Edstrom, but I just really wasn't sure what the tack was with this pick. And continuing with the gigantic boys, the New York Rangers drafted another goalie at 107 in Hugo Olas. Now, I haven't seen Olas play a whole lot, but the one game I saw of him, I think he let in four goals or so. His instat metrics aren't particularly favorable to expected goals against, but again, He's a gigantic goalie, so you give him a few years to develop and you never know what's going to come out of that. Maybe he's another one who can push the two goalies they have in their system right now that are playing in the NHL down the road, but I, again, wouldn't expect a tremendous amount of that down the road. So the New York Rangers, to me, get a 1D. I think overall, when you draft first overall and you pick Alexi Lafreniere, that's a one-category draft to me. He's the best player available right now. He's going to step in and do a great job. Would I have picked different players outside of Braden Schneider and Will Cully? Yes. Would I have picked Oliver Tarnstrom in 92? Probably not, but I can see the argument. But Dylan Garand, Evan Veerling, and Brett Berard going more than a full round ahead of where the Rangers got them, to me, would have been really good picks to me there. So I can't really be too upset with those guys going off the board in that range. I really like what the New York Rangers came out with overall in this year's draft. I just feel like it was very inconsistent and they really didn't take as big a swing as they could have at every pick. But maybe you get something out of Matthew Rempe as a depth option down your lineup, and I do think that Oliver Tarnstrom could be a bottom six center in the NHL one day. And maybe Will Cooley is an energy level guy who just crashes and bangs around the ice all night long, and that would be perfectly fine, but I don't think there's much impact in that player as a player. For Braden Schneider, we'll see. He'll play, I'm just not sure of how much of an impact he'll have, at least not in the near future. So that's it for the New York Rangers recap. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, you can click all the buttons you see below me so you never miss another video. If you really liked it, you could subscribe on Patreon or here on YouTube by clicking join below. You'll get access to a Discord server, data sheets for hundreds of drafted and undrafted prospects across all 31 teams, merchandise discounts, and plenty of other goodies, or you can pick up some merchandise from the Scouchware shop, where 50% of all profits go to the Women's Sports Foundation. So that's all, and thanks for watching, and join me in the next one where we look at the LA Kings. <laughs>